Hello everybody and welcome to the Bright Founders Talk at Temi. Temi is an international software development company that designs, builds and delivers software for sustainable businesses and promising startups. As by now I'm sure you know, my name is Matthew and I'm privileged to be joining Mr. Eric Youngstrom, who is the founder and CEO of a company called OnRamp Funds. How are you today, Eric? I'm very well, thank you. Terrific. Thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Eric, if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Sure. Well, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. I'm the founder and CEO of OnRamp Funds. We provide a working capital platform for e-commerce merchants to kind of like you, help them reach a sustainable place in their business uh, so they can achieve their both personal and business goals. Fantastic. Talking about funding, that's going to pique a lot of people's ears. Let's start at the beginning, if you don't mind. Tell us about the inception of OnRamp Funds. Where did this all come about? How did you start? I um, previously helped launch a shipping company, a shipping and order management company called Shipping Easy uh, here in Austin. And we provided uh, an order aggregation system for merchants to be able to see all the orders they had wherever they sold online which today sounds quite obvious, but in 2012 didn't exist. And within that platform, then we connected merchants to the shipping carriers, right? You get an order online, you got to convert uh, that digital event into a, an analog event, right? That then puts um, a package, you know, puts the whatever you're selling into a box, gets a shipping label on it, gets to the carrier. So it gets to that customer's home within a day or two. Um, otherwise, the, the order is going to be canceled. You're going to lose the revenue and disappoint a customer. In that process, one of the things that we saw happening over the course of, uh, well, I ran that company f for four years, and then we were acquired by a, a larger company called Stamps.com here in the U.S., where I ran Global BD for them for, uh, for, for, for another four years. But in that process and working with small business merchants, one of the things we saw time and again was they had a working capital problem. They would actually have known good orders coming in from an Amazon or a Shopify, uh, but they were out of money so they couldn't even buy the next shipping label to ship the product, which wow. then of course means they're having to cancel the order, refund the money, which means you're paying credit card transaction fees to give the money back. It's worse than not taking the order. Um, and you know, from an Amazon perspective, you're, you're angering Amazon because they don't want that bad customer experience from a, if you're you know, using Shopify and that order is coming from there, you know, the customer's disappointed. And so you're losing a customer, which is the, the worst and last thing you want in a business when you fought so hard to get that order and, and win that customer. You know, the most frustrating part about watching that with these merchants was um, you had a known good order. The revenue and the cash from that order was going to arrive in, you know, three, four, five days, depending on the payment gateway. If it's Amazon, maybe it was a week or two away, right? But there's known dollars there to support the purchase of that next shipping label. So um, in looking at that problem, uh, it looked like an interesting opportunity to try to go build a financing solution that would be purpose-built for the e-commerce industry and doing so from really a set of first principles, which is I want to go look at your order flow. I want to be able to see the your sales history and then use that to underwrite the merchant to be able to essentially purchase more inventory because you have to have inventory to generate sales, pay for the advertising that generates that click, right? That gets you to the next sale and then make sure that the funds are there to actually fulfill and ship that order. So it gives to the customer so that you don't, you know, have to cancel the order. And so out of, out of that experience working with the merchants on their fulfillment activities and order management, there was just tremendous insights into that problem. And so I left Stamps and right at the beginning of COVID, launched uh, OnRamp, spent, well, I even started tinkering with the idea before I left Stamps and, um, you know, really had some, some test proof. Uh, 2021 raised a little bit of money and brought in uh, early engineering team. And uh, we've been scaling the business ever since. And really the purpose, right, is any business needs working capital. It's, it's what keeps the wheels turning. And our mission here is to make sure that the e-commerce merchant has a working capital product and the access to funds necessary to keep up with the demand they're generating. And then the power of our solution is because we're connected to the online order sources. They use Amazon, Shopify. We're connected to their bank 
we have real-time visibility into the business performance, which means when they need their next advance, when they need the next batch of cash, we actually know how much they've grown up to the minute. And we know that in fact, you know, you need an additional 20 or 30% versus last time because that, that demand is now there. And then with the, his, the history we have in the e-commerce world and the history we have from each merchant's data, we also understand their seasonal cycles. So we know, hey, you're getting ready to start preparing for the Christmas season. That just demands additional capital because you're going to see probably somewhere between a 20 and 200% lift in sales over the Christmas season. Um, and you know that requires in a 20 to 200% increase in your working capital spend to make sure the inventory is in stock and ready for that so you don't miss out on the demand opportunity. And so we've, we've purpose-built a, a financing solution around that unique set of parameters so that you know merchants can come to us and in less than two minutes connect all their stores and banks and then let us do the work to say what we can provide and then we re-underwrite um, the merchant every night so that when they need their next loan, the offer is already ready for them. Um, it's approved. It's just as easy as roll out of bed, open your phone, click the, the accept terms button, and the money starts moving to you. That's fantastic. So this is not like working with traditional banks then going for loans. Um, you've got an advantage in this industry because of your previous experience and because you're adapting this, as you say, every day towards what's happening, how the markets are sh shifting, and changing. Has there been right. a good uptake when people understand the concept and what it is that you're offering? There has been. Yeah, we've, we've been very excited about the growth, about the interest our merchants have in the product, about the alignment the product has with their needs. You know, it's not for everybody. There are a lot of people who don't like debt, and I certainly can understand that approach. And if you can bootstrap this and fund it without, fantastic. There are also a lot of people who think they don't like debt, but, you know, they use credit cards. And so, well, what we really talk to people about is we're essentially the extension to the credit card. Our product works very well alongside a credit card. You can use that to purchase the inventory, drive your points, but that's got a 30-day payment cycle and inventory has a 60-day turnover period plus the supply chain timeline, which means you, in fact, won't have generated the returns from the sale of an inventory till well after that payment's due, in which case, again, a working capital advance for us means great. That card's now been paid down. You're not carrying any late fees or penalty interest or things like that. And that card's available for that next transaction because every business always has additional transactions, both for their cost of goods sold and for their their, their operating expenses. And so, you know, releasing those funds uh, allows you to grow a business faster when you have additional sources of capital available to go drive the business. Obviously, when a when a business comes along and they're they're interested in this, they want to know how to apply. What are some of the scoring factors that you take into account? You did mention before, you know, projected sales and that sort of stuff, but how, how easy is it for a business to join up with you? Yeah. So we, we actually try to make it incredibly easy. you you know, the enrollment process is essentially, uh, your first step is connecting your online stores. We're going to use that sales history to create, you know, we, we're going to build out the, the historic sales volume and velocity and, and, you know, growth path. Uh, we're then going to build a forecast looking over the next 30 to 180 days, and we're going to then position a working capital offer around that. So within minutes, you can get you know essentially a pre-qualified number. It's, it's not guaranteed, right? Because there's still more work to be done. Uh, but you can at least know, you know, OnRamp can offer me $30,000 or $200,000. Uh, is it worth continuing through the process? Uh, if, you know, if the answer is we're going to offer you zero, you don't need to take the next step. Um, we don't want you to waste your time, right? We understand that, you know, business owners are extremely busy. So, you know, making things simple and fast is critical. And I think we do a great job of that. But if, you know, if there's a, a preliminary offer there, um, it's worth taking the next step, connect your bank account. And then we can start looking at, you know, what's your cash flow situation like? What's your, your payment history? Do you have a overdrafts and things like that that might impact an offer? Do you have additional debt uh, from other providers that might impact the offer? At that point, we then have enough to say, here's an official offer. This money is available to you, $50,000, whatever the number is. Only then does the merchant actually start going through the most painful process, which is you got to submit your identity documents. You got to submit your business docs, right? And we make it simple and easy, but sometimes people just don't know where they've even put their tax ID letter from the IRS, for instance. Um, so they got to go track that down, upload it to us, you know, 
at a bank, that's typically your first step, right? Give me all your docs before they talk about anything else. Here, you're only doing it if you know that there's actually a reason to jump through that next tube. Um, you know, we do the KYC at that point. We know you're, that's how we get to know our customer. We're validating that we've got a known good customer that they, you know, aren't trying to defraud us or something like that. And at that point, once that clears, which generally just, you know, takes a few minutes, then really the, the work's on our end again, right? It takes the, just a moment to upload that to via our application environment. You know, we do the work behind the scenes, validating all information. And then at that point in time, great, your ability to accept the terms, click the button, and we start moving the money to the merchant. So we try to make it as painless as possible and provide information along the journey that lets the merchant know there's a good reason to take the next step. Um, the other great thing is, you know, for those merchants that maybe haven't reached the initial sales velocity, and our, our minimums are you have to have $3,000 a month and your last 30 days of sales. It's a pretty small barrier. Um, but if you're not there yet, if you'll leave your store connected, the moment we see that threshold hit, we'll, we'll alert you and let you know that you're now eligible um, to start working with us. For merchants that already have that sales velocity, but potentially have other sources of working capital, um, you know, we will alert them when we see that those sources have been paid down far enough that they're then eligible to borrow from us um, as we might be a better partner for them. So what we're trying to do is offload the work from the merchant and do the work on their behalf and automate that. So it just becomes one less thing for the merchant and the business owner to think about so they can go really focus on the important things, growth. Um, and we want to facilitate that. And our goal is to help merchants reach what they believe is, you know, the right sustainable velocity for their business. Some people, you know, have ambitions of building a billion dollar empire. Other people would like to get, you know, a million dollars a year in revenue with a 20% profit margin because they'd rather go teach Sunday school or coach little league. What I want to do is see as many small business owners become successful and sustainable as possible. Uh, I think it makes the world a far better place. Um, and it's the mission of OnRamp is just to help people reach their definition of sustainability. It's been going for a while now. You want to help people reach these goals. Is it working? You must have some feedback by now. It sounds like you, you're making it much easier for these these guys to, to make progress. Yeah. Are they coming back and saying, look, this loan is helping me. Your projections are helping me. You know, this is what I've done in a year. This is how I've grown. This is what I've managed to achieve now because my cash flow problems have been sorted out. Yeah, well, we, we actually see our customers grow significantly. Um, customers grow up to about 75% in their first 180 days with us. We've seen some customers triple their, their sales in less than two years. And that's because a lot of merchants have compelling products, a compelling offer. The challenge is they don't have access to capital, right? The e-commerce industry, um, very, very few e-commerce businesses are going to be venture-backed and, and have equity investors. Um, very, very few... Um, entrepreneurs have rich uncles ready to write checks. Mm. And because of that, you know, as a business, they may get a business credit card offer, but that offer is tied to their individual personal credit capacity, which all of a sudden then means, you know, like my salary is going down because I left my full-time job. Well, great. My credit card is probably going to reduce the, the limit on that card. And now I have less capital available to actually just, you know, buy that next batch of inventory. We don't look at it that way. What we're looking at is what does the business need based on, you know, up to the minute sales performance? Um, you know, it's hard to build a crystal ball that tells you what the future is going to be. But, you know, we build a pretty good crystal ball view into the next kind of 90 days of sales. And we're going to go ahead and, and make a loan against that. That then means that, you know, as the merchant's growing, their line with us grows so that they can then capture more of that growth that they're proving. And, you know, if, as they do that, right, then their new baseline kind of minimum revenue threshold grows month over month over month, um, making them again, more sustainable, right? It allows you to reach a point where you can actually start to, to distribute your profits back to yourself and, you know, build not just the business, but the life that you want for you and your family. Absolutely. Um, talking about building things, um, let's talk a little bit about growth. Let's talk about what's coming in the future. Now, we know AI is the new hot topic. Can you tell us about implementing these new technologies in your business? How do you stay relevant and up to date? With everything changing so fast, you've got to be on the ball 24-7. Um, How do you manage? We're already a, a machine learning-based risk scoring environment. 
And you know, as we accelerate the data we capture and and increase the the data capacity, you know, there's a natural evolution that that moves into more of an AI type risk model as well. It's very interesting in the AI world when you're especially if you're looking at third party tools, um, they become a black box, and it's difficult to want to work with a black box because you're trusting somebody else's decision engine that that maybe isn't explaining the decision very well, which you know, from my perspective, it increases the risk to on ramp. Um, that being said, when we build our own tools, um, one of the things that we like to do is we actually build both the AI and ML tool set, but we require that then to provide an explanation as to why it's coming up with the decision it is, which then allows a human team of underwriters to review that decision criteria and to look for you know discrepancies, errors, things like that. It also then means when we do see bad debt problems coming through, we can go back in and look at the the historic decision engine and 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 the reasons those decisions were made to look for patterns right that would then identify uh, new risk criteria and the beauty of that right is that is a human machine learning AI collaboration in that environment in terms of kind of the way people think of AI today right very much the large language model the LLMs um, is is you know the real you know that's what people perceive as AI today and and it, it is that's it is AI, right? You know, it's just, you don't use a large language model for risk scoring. It's a different type of AI you use for that. Um, we're starting to look at those tools because it helps us to analyze the data coming through different systems faster. It allows us to um, do things like validate a website. You know, a customer comes in, here's my order flow. An AI engine can go out to a website, look at the products being sold, quickly detect, for instance, you know, are you selling marijuana, right? It's legal in some states, not in others. As much as we would like to facilitate that, because of the, you know, federal ambiguity, difficult to do sometimes. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't support people who are selling accessories in that industry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, because that's not illegal. Um, and right. so those tools just help us do those reviews much, much, much faster. Right, we don't have to go have a human do that anymore. Um, you know, a human can look at something that's flagged, but you know, when the AI comes back and says. These are, you know, bicycle pedals and clip-on shoes. Great. Well, you know, no worries there. Proceed. And so, you know, those tools become more and more compelling, you know, as we're seeing that kind of work every day. The other thing that we're starting to look at those is, you know, how can that help with, you know, customer service, loan servicing, things like that, where it's just helping a customer get their questions answered about, you know, what is the, what's our billing practice look like and how is that amount calculated, things like that. The great thing about building software from the ground up because we've we're a proprietary software engine here we have not licensed off-the-shelf tools we have built our tools because of that we have much better insight into what's going on how our customers are acting with us why the decisions are being made that we're making um, our underwriters are using our underwriting tools and and all of that feedback then means you have a, a real fantastic feedback loop that allows you to iterate much much faster and to you know, much more rapidly improve the software experience for our internal teams and for our external users. Incredible. A lot of a lot of moving parts going on there to mm -hmm. get the kind of data that you need, to get the information that you need so that you can make the right decisions and move in the right direction. You must have a, a, a hell of a team behind you of support. I, I work alongside a fantastic team. Our product and engineering team, um, I think six of us have been together since uh, Shipping Easy Days. So, you know, a 12-year history of working together. And then, you know, we have filled that team out with other, you know, very, very senior principal architects um, who, you know, really develop great code. You know, it works very, very well the first time, very few bugs. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we can move then in at a really fantastic pace and improve our systems, you know, almost weekly you're seeing you know, leaps and bounds. It's it's really phenomenal. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Eric, before I let you go, I just want to ask you, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up or maybe maybe mention that I might have skipped through? Any advice for anybody starting out or looking to get into the industry? I mean, look, I think e-commerce is a phenomenal industry. It is going to be one of the big growth industries for the next 10, 20 years, I, maybe longer, although my crystal ball expires in about 90 days. So, you know, no promises there. Um, but what, what I perceive is it is a fantastic opportunity for people who want to 
build their own business, who want to be their own boss. Doesn't mean that you get to go operate independently of the world. You're still very, very much an interdependent component in the world. You have customers you answer to, you have vendors and suppliers you must work with well. But I think the opportunity is so enormous for people of, of all ages to be able to jump in and, and try to build something for themselves. I just want to see more tools being built for them. And I think, you know, the e-commerce industry, we take it very much for granted, but a lot of the tools in the industry are still being built, right? Specific to e-commerce. You know, there are a lot of off the shelf retail tools that kind of get shoehorned in there. That's not something we wanted to build. We actually wanted to say, yeah, how do you do this only for e-commerce? And, you know, I look, I admire people who start restaurants and, you know, run auto repair shops and dry cleaners. And I think there are great products for those industries that exist because those industries are much, much older. Um, but e-commerce is a small business, business industry. Really, we're kind of still in the first 15 years, right? So there's a huge opportunity to build tools in this space, and we're doing so. And there's a huge opportunity to go help people who want to go launch their own businesses in this space. Um, and it's our goal to do so. So yeah, back to you know your mission at your company, right? How do you help more entrepreneurs build sustainable businesses? We want to be a. We want to. We want to solve that same problem, and we're doing it. You know, with with the financing piece because it's a huge piece of it. But there are a lot of other pieces that need to be built, and and we're rooting for everybody to go build those tools. Absolutely, Eric. I want to say thank you very much for your time. It's been super insightful today. Uh, we will be keeping our eye on you for the future, and um, yeah, thanks again. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.